Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV Whiskey One. Good vibrations. With a little mystery that uh, to some extent baffles me to this day. Have you ever heard of an antenna called a loop stick? Basically, a loop stick is a piece of ferromagnetic material, like about the size of, it's like powdered iron, cylindrical solenoidal, about the size of your little finger, although it can vary all the way from, <clears throat> oh, the size of a toilet paper roll, uh, after all the paper's been used up, down to a much smaller uh, device yet, maybe even almost uh, microchip size. But it has a coil of wire around it, so in effect it's kind of like a miniature electromagnet, and it's used in radio receivers, and it's been used in radio receivers for probably about a hundred years. Even if you find an old tube type AM radio receiver, you're likely to find a loop stick antenna inside the back panel, which then is made of perf board or something that will allow the electromagnetic field to penetrate. And that little electromagnet, that little AC electromagnet, picks up the radio signal, enough of the magnetic component of the electromagnetic wave to allow a current that can be amplified and detected, rectified, or no, not rectified, well, in a sense, detected, demodulated, and uh, turned into the signal that you want to hear. The interesting thing about it is that the lower the frequency goes, the more likely you're going to find one of these types of antennas. They even work all the way down into the very low frequency range, 10 to 30 kilohertz. Uh, but uh, when you get up into the HF and VHF range, they become less and less effective. Now, generally speaking, for a transmitting antenna, the opposite is true. The, uh, the antenna must be much larger at lower frequencies because otherwise the radiation resistance is so low that it, uh, you can't make an efficient antenna out of it. And the same indeed holds true for a loop stick. You can receive with them, but you can't really transmit with them. If you try to transmit on, say, uh, 50 kilohertz with a loop stick the size of your little finger, you're not going to have any luck. All you're going to get is a little... Uh, a little hot wire element that may heat up your room if you run enough wattage through it and would probably crack the ferromagnetic core material inside and melt the wire. But if you try to use it for receiving, on the other hand, it'll work great. It has sharply directional characteristics, nulls off the ends of the solenoid, and uh, maximum sensitivity off of the sides. So it's like a little miniature AC electromagnet that will work to detect the existence of a magnetic field or a, an electromagnetic field, but it won't generate an electromagnetic field from an alternating current. It works one way but not the other. Uh, a lot of antennas in amateur radio use can be used for both receiving and transmitting. For example, a Yagi, a vertical, a dipole, a ZEP, all of the antennas that HF and VHF ham radio operators are familiar with. But the loop stick will work for receiving and, in fact, has been used to eliminate interfering sources that come from a defined direction by simply steering that loop around until the direction of the interfering source coincides with the null of the loop. But if you try to transmit with one of those things, no luck. And now, the question that baffles a lot of people, and to, as I said to some extent myself to this day, is why? Well, for transmitting, it's pretty obvious. The radiation resistance is so low uh, that it, you just simply cannot make a low-loss uh, impedance transfer device that will effectively deliver power into that loop stick and allow it to transmit. 
You might be able to do that if you soaked the entire assembly in liquid helium, but not every ham has access to liquid helium. I, I've often wondered whether that would work, whether you could make a loop stick the size of your little finger transmit effectively on 80 meters if you submerged it in liquid helium. I believe that's the coldest known liquid, <clears throat> only a few degrees uh, above absolute zero. That makes it a superconductor. So the resistance of the assembly becomes even lower than the radiation resistance of the antenna itself. But under ordinary circumstances, no such luck. But, but why doesn't the same effect apply to receiving? I really, uh, I'm a little bit at a loss to explain that. Uh, but I do know that for transmitting, you need a certain physical aperture, a certain physical amount of space that the antenna has to occupy in order to have a radiation resistance high enough to allow a reasonably efficient antenna. Perhaps the inefficiency of a loop stick doesn't matter so much because you can amplify the signals when you're receiving. Maybe it really doesn't make that much difference that the radiation resistance is low. You can overcome that by sensitive amplifiers. But I think it's a little bit more complicated than that and the, the exact technical details remain a mystery. So I'm going to leave comments open and see if we can start a discussion about why that is. Why can you take a little loop stick antenna, take a, a little stick of ferromagnetic powdered iron, maybe the size of a double-A flashlight cell, wind a couple of hundred turns of wire around it and make it into a great directional receiving antenna for 160 meters. But if you try to transmit on that thing, you're just going to get a little, a little hand warmer <laughs> or something like that. It's just, it, it's just not going to work. At almost zero efficiency, even with the most effective impedance transfers uh, devices, transmatches that could match a low impedance. Even the most effective one you could design would never be able to overcome that low radiation resistance. So, go for it. Tell me why that is. Some of you people know more about these sorts of things than I do. I'm not really all that knowledgeable. As they say, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing, and where to I... Uh, where to I, where to I start expounding on why that is without really knowing why. I would be dishonest with you, myself, and all of the loop stick antennas in this wide, wide world, some of which still reside in old dust-collecting AM radios in antique shops. Stan Jablisco, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1 Good Vibrations, saying 73 for now, and so long. Bye.